Seven days, seven parts, one robot. I will have seven days to design and test a seven part robot and that includes shipping time. I severely regret including the shipping time. And to make things worse, I am an electrical engineering intern part time. I'm basically a grown man. Anyways, what counts as one part? What I mean is that there are seven unique parts that have a defined function and or come as one product. So I can have say five of the exact same bolt and two of the exact same motors, which have multiple different internal parts, counting as only two unique parts. So, uh, why am I stressing myself out by creating fictional constraints? Well, it's to test myself, I guess. And uh, I guess that means that my competence is on the line as well. You might have noticed that there is an odd number of parts, seven parts, and I might have also guessed that the original challenge was five parts in seven days. You guys are pretty smart. So, yeah, that's what I set out to do back when I was optimistic. So, it is just about uh, three o'clock, July 23rd, and by July 30th, at 3 p.m. I should have a robot, hopefully, whatever that means. So I spent 10 minutes trying to just come up with the general parts that I need, and it's six parts. That is not five parts. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Five parts is truly insane. Some time has passed. Um, I think I figured it out in terms of just the parts. I think I might be able to combine these into one. How is that possible? With PCB assembly, I wanted to have two different parts the power source, the motor driver chips, to be assembled onto a PCB by PCB way, so that it gets shipped to me as one part. That one part would be used with motors, wheels, an Arduino Nano, and a 3D printed chassis for a total of five unique parts. Okay, uh, it's a little bit later, and I think I have all the parts figured out. What I'm planning to do is have these uh, mechanum wheels right here, which are essentially uh, wheels that can allow for translation like this. It's not necessary for the challenge, but I want to challenge myself. So uh, we have this motor right here, um, pretty basic. The motor, you know, just turns on, it spins, very basic, I know. Uh, the PCB, I'm gonna design it hopefully in a little bit. For the power source, I was thinking of super capacitor right here. Arduino Nano, I already have it um, up there, very nice. The H-Bridge, uh, this one is going to utilize this chip right here. The last part would be the 3D printed part to hold everything together. Up until this point, I've had experience with every part except the supercapacitors, so why risk it? Other power sources that I brainstormed needed wires not already attached, creating an extra part. Supercapacitors come with metal leads that I can solder, so it's one part. Now I have used capacitors before, which store a small amount of electric charge, so supercapacitors just store a lot more. That makes them more dangerous, as you can see here. Guys, do not try this at home. Here we go. burned a hole through some plastic. Not me doing this literally at home, but the difference is that I am a trained electrical engineering intern professional, and you aren't. So, I'm basically a grown man. Here's the dilemma. PCB assembly actually takes quite a long time. What I mean by that is, even though it says it's fast turnaround time, that doesn't make any sense because I can't really ask them to speed up someone else's shipping time. So instead, I think I'm gonna have to do it in seven parts instead of um, five. It'll have a nice jingle to it. Seven parts, seven days. Um, yeah. Hopefully, PCB Way will fabricate and deliver the PCB in under seven days. Fortunately, they can fabricate PCBs in one day, but it can take up to seven days to ship. So hopefully we're lucky with the shipping company. They can also manufacture parts in plastic or metal with 3D printing and CNC milling, but fortunately I won't need that for the chassis because I have my own 3D printer. It's good. I bet you didn't think that was a sponsorship plug for PCB Way, did you? Until now. Obviously, because I'm saying it is. Um, wow, Ryan, Ryan such, such a, a good sponsorship plug. plug. Of course, uh, PCB Way can't send me their PCB if I don't send them my design. So um, let's get started on that. PCBs, they allow for intricate copper wires to be embedded into boards and for the connection of components to each other. What could have been two different parts, wires, and a breadboard are now one. Um, it has... Two motor controllers, uh, each one of them can control two motors, and then we have the uh, Arduino in the middle with super capacitors at the end. This is where I'm going to connect some wires so that I can charge them. I don't know how that's exactly going to work out, but it'll work out. The schematic wasn't too bad, it took me about like 30 minutes, and this uh, wasn't too bad either. The robot's main capability is movement. The motor control circuitry is pretty simple actually. This is a motor driver chip. 
It's responsible for taking signals from our Arduino Nano, the brain, and making motors spin accordingly. According to its data sheet, this is how it does it. It has driver input pins and driver output pins. If one input pin receives a signal while the other doesn't, electricity flows one way. Reverse the input signals, and electricity flows the opposite way. The IC allows for small electrical signals from the Arduino Nano to control large amounts of electricity, which flow through the motor. We can pulse the signals using pulse width modulation, PWM, at varying amounts to increase or decrease motor motor speed. With the end of the first day, it was time to send the PCB to PCB way. Another day, another design. Let's get started on the chassis. We did it. Um, I don't know why I say we so much, but I, I guess you guys are in it for the ride. We have the nice, the Tinkering Techie channel name. This is one piece, I mean, believe it or not. We have these things that will press fit into uh, the motor. Over here, we just have these uh, anchors right here. It's basically to wrap around the wire that comes from this edge right here. And then of course we have the PCB. It's gonna be press fit. You probably realize the theme here, they're all press fit parts because if we use nuts and bolts, that's another you know, kind of unique component that we have to use. So obviously we can't do that. With the progress so far, I mean, I, I feel pretty good about it. Day one was, you know, making the PCB, got that finished within a day, and then now it's the chassis. Looks very nice. Of course, the assemblage of plastic and metal won't do anything unless I give it instructions. Those instructions come in the form of software, which is the next hurdle. I've never used mechanic wheels before, which look like this, which means I've never programmed them before. So I had to do some research. Exactly 5 p.m. right now. And essentially, I've been looking at this to uh, find out how to program the mechanum drive, which is called holonomic motion. And I got it down. Essentially, this will allow me to put in like a XY translation values and then a rotation values. Is this going to work? First time? Probably not. Okay. Um, so to explain mechanum wheels, I am going to use a, a lint remover. So if you had wheels with rollers that are straight on and not 45 degrees, this is what happens, right? The wheel spins. Oops, that's not perfect. The wheel spins and, you know, just pushes the wheel forward. But if you spin it like this, the wheel is going backwards like this. But the wheel is angled 45 from that, which is what a mechanum wheel is. Watch what happens. It moves this way a little bit. And so that force is basically what allows the mechanum wheel to have the robot slide side to side. Okay, so with the code down uh, on the third day, I mean, I, I think we're doing pretty good. Actually, the parts, well, not every part, but I think a part came in and I think it's uh, motor, yeah, the motors. So without the motor controller, uh, we won't be able to actually control these and test anything so i'll have to wait tomorrow i'm pretty sure tomorrow is when they come in the pcb was on its way the chassis was designed and the code was written i had nothing else to do but to print the chassis and wait everything was perfect you're probably expecting a butt weren't you yeah yeah you're right there is a butt because i made a huge mistake ever since i bought those electronic parts on day one that problem that mistake persisted and lurked in the shadows until so I don't know, when I, when I was working out, I was checking to see if, you know, the, the parts were coming in. So, you know, these very important parts right here, uh, power source and the H bridge. And I was like, hmm, why is it still processing? Look, it, it still says this order is scheduled. Oh. What I did was I was like, okay, I want to schedule the shipment. So schedule shipments, right? I was like, hmm, that would mean that if I picked the date, it would arrive on that date. But I didn't read because it says for schedule shipments, which means you schedule when it ships. <laughs> and that's not, the, that's not the worst part. That's not the worst part. It, I went on to here and for some reason, for some reason, I, I was like, okay, let me just pick the last day of the challenge for, for some reason. I picked this day, which um, is a week from when I started the challenge. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, I sure hope they deliver on weekends. <sighs> yeah, so look at this. The previous order has this. Scheduled the shipment calendar. And then the new order that I did today doesn't have that. Um, but between you and me, this didn't happen. 
At this point, uh, the package on the second order of the exact same parts may or may not come in on time. So it's going to be pretty close. So I'm going to go to sleep in like a couple minutes and I was like, let's check the packages. Okay, July 28th for my PCB. That's very nice. The DigiKey order, they have an estimated delivery date on the last day of the challenge. I started at 3 p.m. on the first day of the challenge, which means that I have until 3 p.m. So hopefully the package uh, arrives until then. There's nothing I could do but wait and hope for a literal miracle. Or probably waiting for a butt, right? So, we're saved. Seems like the DigiKey order is coming in one day earlier. So basically, today, the date of recording. Oh yeah, and if you can't tell, I just woke up. For some reason, the DHL order is coming in um, yesterday, but it hasn't yet. Okay, so, very happy news. The PCB, it's here. The parts, they're also here. Left in my mailbox. For some reason, they all arrived at like 3 p.m. The Lord is merciful because, <laughs> because honestly, I, I couldn't have asked for a better timing. Basically 24 hours, literally 24 hours, right before the end of the challenge. Do you have any idea the chances of that? The DigiKey order is in the mailbox, so I gotta, I gotta get that, so let's go. Ah, nice day to go out for a walk and to get DigiKey digi -key parts from my mailbox. Yeah, thank goodness. Might as well just get everything else. Got our parts, finally, after like seven days. I don't know why I'm talking so quietly. I'm, out, I'm literally outside. I quickly set up my workspace and assembled the PCB. After all, I only have 23 hours at this point. Wait, does this work? I guess we'll find out. Yup. Oh my goodness. Oh, would you look at that? The game plan is to literally just connect these motors and hope for the best. It's trying, but I can't do it. I think I programmed it wrong. It's just a buzzing noise, that's it. I just want you to spin. Oh, oh, never mind. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. Yeah, I had to read that off. <laughs> um, so. This is basically the same code for all of the motors. So what the code does is it checks this, it executes, and then it checks this second if statement. It doesn't execute uh, if the speed is greater than zero, right? So it skips this, but then because this is false, it will execute this else statement no matter what. So literally the code is executing these two, um, one after the other, very quickly. So it turns on, and then it turns off, and then it turns on, and then it turns off. Basically not gonna do anything. It needs some time to spool up, right? Okay guys, um, I made a second lapse in my coding judgment. I realized, hmm, why aren't any of my motors wanting to go backwards, right? I printed it out, okay, negative. We want to go backwards, very simple. Put it in here, negative, integer, right? The speed is a negative number. Oh, so yeah, it's basically 255 minus a negative 255, but 255 is the max number that we can put in to uh, the analog write function. There we go. So we'll just change all of those to pluses and we should be good. I have made another severe lapse in judgment. I know this is a, a pattern, but um, this one was good. The forward speed is good. Um, so you do that. You can't have a negative number inside of this function. It has to be positive.
there it goes so yeah it does work just barely in seven days I call that an absolute win that's got to be more than 13 seconds yeah it's overperforming let's go so as far as I'm concerned this thing actually works thankfully all the parts came in today so I honestly thought I was gonna be down to the wire um, I mean it's sort of down to the wire judging by how it's like less than a day before the end of the challenge but yeah I think we did it uh, this challenge had made me realize that with scarcity in terms of the number of parts and time in this case creates a lot of creativity so it's pretty cool you know what else is cool donuts <laughs>